Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha Raka Kudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. I also want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity. Alright? So today the Spirit has me in Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 9. It says, be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom, and teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. All right, and so this is pretty self-explanatory. You know, it's not good to be jealous of your wife, because you're only teaching her how to hurt you, you see? Um, I read this, you know, Ecclesiasticus was uh, my favorite book when I was a young man, because I had a good Bible at that time, and my Bible had the Apocrypha in it. All right, and then years later, I, uh, I, I got another uh, Bible and, um, you know, I was looking for Ecclesiasticus in it, also known, known as uh, Sirach. And I was like, you know, where, where the heck is this book I'm looking for, Sirach? It was my favorite book. And um, I didn't know about the Apocrypha at that time. I was uh, 18 years old, you know, but the Lord had given me the the knowledge from the Apocrypha as a young man. And then, uh, you know, I, I didn't really do, I wasn't diligent at that time, so I didn't look into it too much. And, and then uh, years later, you know, the Lord revealed this, the Apocrypha to me again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakak all right? So the point I'm bringing is that I read this verse as an 18 year old, you know, 17 year old. And um, so I knew a lot of the wisdom and I remember a lot of this wisdom stuck with me. But like I say, you know, it was, it was hidden from me. <laughs> Just like the book Apocrypha means, the word Apocrypha means uh, hidden books, you know. Sent out, sent away hidden is what Apocrypha means. So, you know, and nonetheless, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Kadash Brakta, you know, the Lord has granted me this uh, this knowledge again, you know. And now with deeper understanding uh, due to the uh, the uh, the truth, you know. Alright, so you know, I knew this lesson here. I knew you weren't supposed to be jealous of your wife, you know. Um, I'm gonna keep reading on though, verse two. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. All right, and harlot is another word for whore, all right? And the word snare means trap. So uh, basically uh, a whore is a deep ditch, all right? And a trap. So, you know, you gotta stay away from that as a man because, you know, in the end, she's gonna fuck you over, man. You know, you, you end up getting married to a woman. She may be good looking, but she's a harlot. And you may, you may lose your mind on behalf of her beauty. And you're going to be in a bad situation, man, because, uh, you know, the sinner can't escape. The Bible says that a sinner cannot escape, uh, you know, the, the wicked woman or the harlot, you know. Let me, let me find that verse real quick. Yeah, it's in uh, Ecclesiastes. Let's go to it real quick. Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. It says, And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth Yahweh shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. You see? So, man, if you're not in this truth and you, you know, you... You go into that deep ditch, which is a harlot or a whore. Man, you're gonna you're gonna suffer, bro. You're gonna be in <laughs> you're gonna be in some deep shit. You know, that's that's a hard thing to to uh, to get away from. You know, it's a trap. You know, so 
moving on, um, I'm going to go to uh, verse 2, Ecclesiasticus in the Sirach. Ecclesiasticus is also known as Sirach, all right? It says, Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy... I'm sorry, I'm at verse 4. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer, lest thou be taken with her attempts. All right, so that's just a basically a charmer, you know, a woman who can sing to you. You know, she's going to charm your ass, and then before you know it, you're going to be doing all the wicked shit you never thought you would be doing, you know. So, verse 5, it says, Gaze not on a maid, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her, all right? So, you know, during uh, the ancient times, there were maids, you know, that were, you know, like the midwives, the women who actually were, you know, belonged to other men, you know, you're not supposed to gaze at another man's concubine or his woman, you know, otherwise, you know, you're going to fall by the precious things that are in her, all right? Verse 6, give not thy soul unto harlots that thou lose not thine inheritance. And then this is where it starts getting uh, not only literal, but also spiritual and parabolistic, right? It's a parable. Because verse 6, it says, Give not the soul unto harlots, which, yeah, you don't want to give your soul to a whore, you know? You don't want to fall in that snare or that trap. But um, it says that thou lose not thine inheritance. So this is dealing with also the, the parable form of this, which would be, you know, the... Uh, the notion of the uh, the false doctrines, all right, because false doctrines are likened unto women, all right. So you know that that's how you lose your inheritance, which is uh, you know, as an Israelite, you have a great inheritance so long as you repent, you know. But if you're not able to, you know, stay in the truth, stay in the real truth, and you go off in these false doctrines or these false women which are likened unto harlots and, and uh, you know, they're actually dealing with, uh, like I say, false doctrines. Uh, you lose your inheritance, man. If you become a Christian after coming in this truth and then you meet a beautiful woman and she wants to take you to the Christian church or she wants to take you to the Catholic church, next thing you know, man, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're doing all that wicked shit, that wicked ritual, you know, and, and, and that's not the truth. So that's, that's likened unto a a whore or a woman or you you would be looking like at a like a whore going to you know ch basically cheating on Yahweh you know forsaking the true power so verse 7 look not round about thee in the streets of the city neither wander thou in the solitary places thereof all right so you, you don't want to be looking looking for these women or these churches you know you want to keep it with the church the, the truth and keep, and keep your own wife, you know. Keep your own wife, which in this truth, this Bible and this, this truth is our wife. We're supposed to liken this uh, truth as unto a beautiful woman, you know. We're supposed to desire this truth the same way we would desire a beautiful woman, you see. So you don't want to be wandering around in the streets, you know, looking for another um, man's wife or another you know a different truth you know which there's only one truth but a different doctrine I should say because there's only one truth so you see so you gotta just solitary that means you know keep it solo in, in the truth don't don't fall back into these uh, into these uh, false doctrines that are likened unto whores or women, you know? All right, verse 8. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been to be deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. So you see? So turn away from your eyes from that beautiful woman. You don't want to be lusting after a another man's wife, all right? Because before you know it, you're going to get caught in that trap. Um, verse 9. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine, lest thine heart incline unto her, and so, thou, and so through thy desire 
thou fall into destruction. You see? You, you definitely don't want to mix wine and women, man. 